Hi everyone, James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my gosh, today we're doing a makeup video. Yes, we are going to be trying out the new Trixie Mattel X Juno Birch Palette from <gasps> Trixie Cosmetics. Look at the lovely box they sent me in PR because when you're a very, very successful and famous drag queen, you get PR. So here we go, I'm opening it up. Ooh, the beautiful blue tissue paper. <gasps> Would you look at that? Juno Birch inspired eyelashes. Oh my gosh. What is this one called? The Juno. It's the Juno Lash. Awfully big for a Juno Lash. She doesn't wear lashes that big, but maybe she'll start. All right, we also have a little glossy of Juno Birch and it says in the back, yes, that's happening. The hottest collab on earth and several other and several other planets is on the way, and it's absolutely stunning and gorgeous. Introducing the galaxy's first ever human slash alien collab. Achieve this out of the world beauty with Trixie X Juno 12 Pan Palette. Aw, look at that, it's got little Juno's like glasses on it too. That's cute, how pretty. All right, now let's take a look at the products that I was sent. I was sent eyelashes, of course. Okay. But we have Juno Birch, is this lipstick or lip gloss? What is this? Yes, that's happening. Liquid lipstick called Junebug. Ooh, this packaging is adorable. <gasps> okay, yeah, that is it. That is a, tip. That is a full on spot on Juno Birch lip. I am in love. Look at her. We also have the Juno Birch palette. The box is everything, it's simple but effective. Check that out. I wonder if it's on, yep, it's the same thing on the palette. So let me hold the palette up for y'all. Ooh, over the eyes, so it's like a glasses. Yes, that's happening. <laughs> All right, let me just hide the mirror. Take this little plastic thing, get out of here. Oh my God, these are the colors. They are very much like a, a palette inspired by The Sims, I can tell, just from like the colors. If you ever go through like the wallpaper section in The Sims 2, it's very that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, I already got a little bit on my fingers from catching it wrong, so here we go. Now, let me just go through some of the names because the names are everything. There is Bonehilda, Wormhole, Lavendrous, Paws, Moon Beach, Pluto Root, Grim Reaper, Snozberry, Stunning, Flamingo, Joy Desperate, that one, and Human Beans. <laughs> All Juno Birch inspired isms. I am living. I, I wanna get started and do a Juno Birch inspired look, so that's gonna happen. Yes, that's happening. So, first things first, I have to get my eyebrows glued down, so I'll be doing that right now. Let's glue down the eyebrows. Be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, this is my face. Yes, I have my eyebrows all glued down. Foundation is on, let's get started. So first things first, let's dig into the Juno Birch palette. I think I'm going to use this last color here, Human Beans. So get my little brush brush and show y'all what I'm talking about here. Human Beans. Dig into her and we're gonna start mapping out our crease. Now I'm gonna try and do like a Juno Birch inspired look. Like when Juno does her human look, she has like a disguise look that she does. And it sort of reminds me of like a 1970s like exploitation babe, like a Sherry Kafaro or someone like that like regard, almost Farrah Fawcett-esque or um, like a Russ Meyer heroine from the 70s, you know, from the Beyond the Valley, the Super Vixens kind of girl which I live for. It's gonna do a little miniature map here because I'm only gonna do one eye on camera so I don't take up too much time. All right, now I'm gonna go in next with Pluto Root, which is this one right here. Pluto Root, hello. And we're going to deepen that up because what I like about that too is just like the regular Juno makeup is very, very colorful and very blue and very much sticks to that whole scheme. Very difficult makeup to do, by the way. Like I tried replicating something like that for Halloween one year with traumatic results. So hats off to you, Juno. Like your makeup's not easy. She does really round eyes. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Is we're gonna create a roundness. Cause it's supposed to be like she's wearing human skin. You know, she's got her skin suit on. All right. Now, I'm gonna cut this quick using Morphe. Morphe. Now I love this look. She doesn't do it that often. 
probably because it's like not as popular as her usual, you know, blue makeup look. But I think she does really gorgeous, you know, human makeup. <laughs> Sounds so strange to say, but yeah. Her human makeup is so beautiful. And it's like a really bizarre combination of like many different eras. Because she mentioned to me that like the Jito character is very much like an alien that's found a bunch of magazines, but all the dates are kind of all over the place. So she's picking and choosing all these different fashion trends from like different eras. So nothing really quite goes together. Like, I love that. Like she's got a lot of the 50s aesthetic mixed with 60s, then 70s, and then like some like really strange choices from the 80s. Like this alien crash night on Earth. And all she had was just these magazines she stole from beauty salon that just never threw them out. Which I love that, like trying to blend in, but you're standing out. <laughs> Like, you're really, really having a difficult time blending in. That makes for great comedy. An angler fish out of water. Now, I'm gonna set this. I'm gonna use some of the colors from this palette to set it. I'm going to use Moon Beach to try and set it. And if I don't like it, I'll probably go in with Bone Hilda. But we're gonna try Moon Beach first. So, Moon Beach. Let's see how she looks as a setting. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I think it's more of a transitional color, so we'll only do a little bit here on the eyelid. And then we'll do Bohilda in the corner. That's what we'll do. Bohilda we're going to go into the corner with. Just to brighten the eye up. I'm going to try and do the eyebrow. Because Gino has a very distinct eyebrow. And I noticed when she does even the human look, she still has the Gino eyebrows. With like those really thin 1920s brows. Like I said, it's jumping all over from eras. Like every single like kind of weird trendy thing from different eras of beauty are all thrown into her character. But it's like that kind of stuff I love. Like nothing really goes together. And I showed you already, we're going to use Pluto Root again. So Pluto Root. We're going to try and do the Juno eyebrow. I've seen her do it once before. She literally can just do it just on her face, just like... She just goes for it. So I'm going to attempt this. And thankfully, I have foundation in case something goes horribly wrong. Hey, I kind of did a good job. Let's just redo that a little bit. Just darken it up. These kind of eyebrows, I don't think I've ever really done. I don't think I've ever done like a 20s look. I don't know why. I think it's probably because like 20s is my least favorite era of fashion. Everything's very covered up and like the dresses aren't very nice. So I don't really mess around with fashions from the 20s too much. And I don't like that really helmety looking finger wave look. So yeah. But this is actually kind of cute. I might be inspired to try a 1920s look. Why not? <laughs> it looks bizarre. Okay. Let's go through with some eyeliner and eyeline this up. Now, I was so excited to get this Juno Birch collaboration because I heard rumblings of it for a while now. Like, even back when I was filming Trixie Motel, I kept asking Trixie, like, when is it coming out? Like, I have to know. And she's like, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. And even when Juno was there, I still wouldn't let up. It's like, I have to know what this thing looks like. Like, you don't understand. I need this collection in my life. Because Juno is one of those creators I discovered during lockdown. Like, I really got into watching her videos when I couldn't leave the house. So I just sit there and cook and just listen to her rattle on about The Sims 2 or do her makeup or do her boyfriend's makeup. Like, it was really something that got me through lockdown. So I appreciate her for that. It was a nice little escape. All right, so her eyeliner is like 1950s classic cat eye. So we're going to try and emulate that. It looks gorgeous on her eye shape. On me, we might have to make a few adjustments. We'll have to do it modified. It's like that one lady in your aerobics class, she's doing it all modified. A little Betty Davis for me, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> Let's go in and do a cut crease. I'm just going to use a brown, just a brown liquid eyeliner. And they'll probably go over with something from the palette just to give it a more depth, but for the most part, I'm going to go over with brown right now. So let me just find my little marker. Where is my marker? There it is. Okay. Brown. Just cut that crease quick. I started doing this to my crease after Tracy did my makeup. I don't know what it is. I just really like the look of it. Especially for like brunches. It really does add like a nice little like depth to the eye. It's a little animated, but still it gives that nice little look. Like a nice, like, it looks like skin. Now, I'm going to go over that with a little bit of color from the palette. All right, now I want to darken up my eyeliner. So I'm going to be using Grin Reaper. You know, like the man all of Spectre is in love with, the Grim Reaper. That's right, I know all the Sims lore thanks to Juno. 
I feel like I know her Sims lore more than I do the actual game. <laughs> I consider her as more canon than what's ever featured in the games. The Sims 2 went ham when it came to their storylines, I have to say. Like, they weren't playing around. Like, they had some backstories up in there. I feel like I should do my under eye. But you've seen me do that a million times. There's nothing really spectacular about it. It's just white with black. It's my same under eye I do all the time. So I'm gonna do that quick and just touch up my eyeliner a little bit and I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Now I have the eyes all done. It's time to start doing our little things like contour, lips, our little finishing touches. The things that take us just a few minutes to do. Now, for contour, I actually started using something new. I've been using these palettes, these little compacts from MAC, these guys. This is Studio Fix, you know, a classic. This one is C7 and A90. Yeah, just using those, and I'll mix those together just to get my contour blend that I want. It's gonna come off a little harsh at first, but I've been using these for brunch because I want something that's a little stronger, because a problem with my contour for a long time was that it was really, really faint. This one, it goes on hard, but I blend it away soft. So yeah, it's gonna look hard at first, but it's because it hasn't been blended out. That's it so far, like I said, hard. So, let's do the other side. I only use the lighter color for my jaw. I don't use a dark under there. Cause that looks like you have a, you know, a beard. So I use the lighter tan one here. But like I said, contour is super easy. Now I'm not doing my forehead contour because I'm not wearing a wig where it requires that. Like my forehead's already to look small cause of the wig I'm wearing, the hairline's been ventilated on it. So it's gonna fit my head. I don't need that extra shadow there. All it's gonna do is just make the lace look dirty. So now, Time to start Junoing this look up. First things first, I'll blend a little bit here. Like I said, blend it away. Blend upwards and away from the face. Classic, classic drag. I wanna start doing the white dots on the face because she's known for the white specks on her face like a reflection from how shiny her skin is. At least I think that's what it is. Juno, what is that about? I never asked you about that when I had you over here. What's that all about? I would like to know because I do find them fascinating. A one, our big one. They're small. Okay, I think she also does one like around the eyes as well. Let's do the eye too, why not? Big, beautiful. And yeah, I believe that's the one she does. Let me double check my reference photo. And then one on the lip, but we'll get to that when we get to it. It's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna set it with some white from the palette. So we're gonna go in with Bonehilde. Just set those. Ooh, it's so cute, so Juno. All right, now let's do the contour of the nose quick. Can't believe I did not do that. All right, now the nose, I'm still using the Manny palette because I'm running out of it, so I had to find other things. So I'm just gonna do her. Oh, the thingy died. Ernie the monitor turned off. All right, I apologize. I feel like a total influence right now. My camera totally died. So if you're wondering why I look like John Waters, I was finishing my lips as I realized the camera is not running anymore. So thankfully I'm still here. I'm still here, okay? Like Shirley MacLaine in Postcards from the Edge, I'm here. All right, so what I was saying on the lips that you did not hear me is that Juno is known for doing this round, no arch in the lip kind of look. It's very Betty Davis, very 1930s. Like they used to do this a lot to give yourself a fuller lip. It's an old camera trick. I always think of the little caricature from Ode to the Bouncer. Who is that? The Studio Killers? The let me in or I'll get physical girl. Like she had lips like this. And I actually, it's a callback for me because I used to do my lips like this all the time. Cause I just love the way it looks. One, cause of Betty Davis, but also cause of the little Ode to the Bouncer girl. I like looking at a cartoon. It is very cartoony. I think of her or Jessica Rabbit had lips like this too. Like while you don't have like a bow in your lip, you'll get a natural bow when you smile and stuff. Like it's very just like a big lip. I used to love this cause like I love smiling in drag. So it does give you like a big smile. But for me now, it just depends what character I'm doing in order to do lips like this. But yeah, if you had like a bigger crease, you'd be Betty Davis down. Like that's how her lipstick and her makeup always looked. I love that old Hollywood starlets. Like you always have those distinctive things that you can do to where you can get their look. Like Joan Crawford, if you did the eyebrows and everything and the big full lips, you get Joan Crawford. Betty Davis, it's all about the eyes and the round lips. Or even so far as like Marilyn Monroe, she always had like the wing eyeliner underneath here. 
Elizabeth Taylor had her big eyebrows. All right, I'm just filling these lips in before we go in with our lipstick. Blush, that's what I'm missing, blush. This needs blush. So, highlight and blush. For my highlight, I have actually been using, I'm not really doing a whole lot of creams a lot anymore. I'm doing Studio Fix again. This one is in NC10. This one right here, I'm gonna do highlight with that. Add a little bit of highlight to the face like that. Not doing crazy highlight anymore. Cause I feel like it's not really necessary. Beautiful. Okay. So for the blush, I'm going to dip into Trixie Cosmetics Summer of Love palette. And this one's gotten a lot of love for me. It's actually a newer palette and I've already like breezed through it. <laughs> so I'm going to go in, excuse me, move you over here with Girl on Girl. And we're just going to brighten up this face, make it nice and sunny blush the crap out of this face because one thing about Juno's looks when she does this is she's always very pinky in the cheeks like you look at the old Barbies from the 60s they just like blush on their face little round circle of blush like the mod era Barbie she always had blush like that let's do our lipstick and we're done just about this is the look so let's get our Juno Birch inspired lipstick from Trixie Cosmetics and this one is called Junebug I'm gonna use a little bit here <gasps> oh my god. All right, pause. I think I'm in love. This is like the perfect pinky nude lipstick. Oh my god. This is so pretty. Juno! You didn't say this was in the collection. This is cute. Oh my god, I'm buying all of them. This is so pretty. I love this. Oh my god. It's like my new favorite lipstick. Oh my god. This is really pretty. I'm gonna let it dry down so I can do the corners with some shadow, but... Ooh. I'm feeling this. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I feel really pretty. Like, this is a pretty lipstick. Ooh. As I look at myself in the camera monitor, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> where did you come from? It feels like it's a little dry, so I'm gonna go in with my eyeshadow and just taper the corners a bit. Oh yeah, the contour. It's lit. This is it. Okay. This look is done. I'm not going to rush this or put any more onto this because I feel like it's not going to get any better than this. I look gorgeous and I'm just going to accept that. Okay. So I'm going to put on my Juno Birch inspired human being look and I'll be right back with the final look. <laughs> Welcome back. I am human female, James Mansfield. Ha 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 ha. Squeak. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. I actually really love this makeup. Thank you so much, Trixie Cosmetics and Juno Birch for a wonderful collection. Oh my gosh, I adored this. I have to say the Rockstar products from this have to be the palette. The palette was a really fun one, but Junebug, Junebug, baby. As a lipstick, I am obsessed. Okay, I'm all about this Junebug lipstick. I'm gonna buy like five more of these things because I'm just obsessed. I love them. Oh my gosh. And the palette is really wonderful too. I didn't get a chance to try out the eyelashes because, well, they look so cute inside their display packaging. I kind of just want to save them and hold on to them as like one thing that's a collector's item for me. Because especially like the eyelashes, I wouldn't use anyway because they're a little small for my, you know, large eyes. But as a collector's item, I'm going to hold on to these guys. I love the Trixie Cosmetics X Juno Birch collection. This was fabulous. And I have to say like, it made for a really wonderful alien in disguise as a human being. Hello, I am human female, James Mansfield. <laughs> this is a fun look, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I love both these girls. So I'm so excited they got to join forces and create you know, a wonderful collection of makeup. Oh, and do you like my hair? This is actually a wig that I restyled on Ernie's channel. Be sure and check that out. I, he washed the hair using Wigs by Vanity's method of how to wash synthetic hair, and I restyled it on his channel. So if you wanna see how I made this gorgeous, revamped, original James Mansfield do, be sure and check it out there. Now, I hope you all enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro.
Click here and see me style a wig inspired by Bob's Purse First Impressions wig. Only this time, it's human. Or see me infiltrate Trixie Motel. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll tackle you in the supermarket. So click it.